fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or a large part of it were subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle until in God's good time, the new world with all its power and might steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the old. I told the House two months ago that whereas in France our fighter aircraft were wont to inflict a loss of two or three to one upon the Germans, the gratitude of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to the British airmen who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. All our hearts go out to the fighter pilots whose brilliant actions we see with our own eyes day after day. But we must never forget that all the time, night after night, month after month, our bomber squadrons travel far into Germany, find their targets in the darkness by the highest navigational skill, aim their attacks, often under the heaviest fire, often with serious loss, with deliberate careful discrimination, and inflict shattering blows upon the whole of the technical and war-making structure of the Nazi power. Hey everybody, how are you going? Uh, Andrew from Flight Sim AU here. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We've got the new Spitfire. Uh, 
Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1X or basically Mark 9. This is an awesome piece of kit. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of a fly over the what would have been the beaches of Normandy, have a look at some of the history behind it and just go along the coast and show you some of the cool you know some of the cool views and stuff. Now it's pretty not modeled I have to say it's not been updated there's no new um, update for it but what we're going to do is have a little look so the actual stream will take place we're going to leave a uh, uh, Marpetus and go and have a look at some if I show you the overlay here so we're going to have a look basically on the left hand side here you see the western side uh, we're going to take off from up the top here and then we're going to drag our way down to San Mary Glee, have a little look there and then move on down to Carentan. So you, what you've got here is 82nd Airborne and the Americans trying to protect that west uh, western um, edges to the beaches, landed at both of those two places. And we're going to have a little look at that and then we're going to cut across the beaches, Utah, Omaha, Gold, jo uh, Juno and Sword. Utah and Omaha predominantly with the Americans, but it was just the Americans and the Canadians and the English gold Juno and sword and then we're going to head down to Cannes where there's an airport down there and we'll have a little look at the uh, British airborne drop which was down at um, Pegasus Bridge and we'll have a fly over there and then we'll head back to Cannes so it's pretty interesting when I sort of was trying to plan the route and I went flew across yeah there's not a lot of modeled stuff so I've got a couple of expansions that would should hopefully allow us to see a bit more detail. Uh, I'm not even sure there's a church in San Meriglis, which is a bit weird because that's pretty much should be modeled. I don't actually think they model churches. Anyway, let's have a little look. So we're just gonna fly. So it boots itself up. The um, I've got a little map. I've also added in the link, if you're on the website, you can follow along on Google Maps, which I've added in the link to, if you go to flightsim.au, there's a Google map overlay and what that will do is you'll be able to follow along and tap on the different bits that I'm showing you. This model is pretty new, the the Flying Irons model, it only came out yesterday and I was going to do one about flying over the UK, uh, I didn't get a chance to do it and I started having this idea about the, the Normandy beaches and yeah hopefully um, we'll have a look. I'm not sure who's following, uh, I've got no idea really because I'm not looking at the chat so I'm really just talking to myself. So if you are watching hello uh, good for you and hopefully we'll get a few more people so first of all we're going to, we're going to cold start but obviously it's too early in the morning for the let's let's go to about let's say 750 how does that sound first of all i'm going to show you the aircraft so this is a, uh, the spitfire and we're on uh we're in france and the I don't know why they plant like so much stuff around the airport. I should probably turn it down. Um, right, let's have a little look, see. So this is the, if you look on the wings and on underneath, you see these black and white stripes. And all aircraft on D-Day, whether it was a bomber, transport or fighter plane had these recognition stripes. Uh, and they all had it, and they were all painted last minute. So you can actually have a look and see like uh, some of them when you see the actual footages, it looks like it's been done by um, Stevie Wonder. So there's some real interesting paint schemes, but to be honest with you, I'd rather have that than get shot down by my own side. So let's have a little look inside the cockpit. Like you, you can see here, I've got the door wide open. So let's just go inside. So I'm gonna show you around, and then I'm gonna cold start it and explain to you how that works, the cold start. So you, on the left hand side, you've got your pitch trim, You've got your mixture control. There's your main throttle, which is actually set to 100. So I'm just going to dial that back a little bit. Uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you've got your propeller control, your magnetos here, left and right. That's what starts the aircraft uh, electrics. Then you've got gear. So if I'm moving across, I don't think you can see my mouse, but um, coming across, I'm going to remove the yoke visibility because basically if you don't, you can't see this, which is the open and fuel shutoff valve, which has to be switched to on. Then we're going to come across this engine primer. Now, this is why I think this model is not working properly, because basically, hey, thank you, whoever did that. I can't actually see. I think there was a like there, but thank you. I'll check that in a second. There's a bit of a delay. I just heard a dinging sound. So thank you very much. So that going across, you've got the fuel tanks and the pressure tanks. 
Andrew, my man, how are you going? Sorry, there's a bit of got a bit of a delay here. Yeah, so I think with this model, there's a few things they need to add to it because it's nowhere near as precise as the X Plane one, which feels a lot different. So there's a lot of things here that are a little bit. This is locked. This engine primer, and that's actually key. This here, with this wobble pump on the real Spitfire, you'd need to pump that up and down. This thing, I don't think it seems to do anything. It just seems to just be at the moment. I'll, I'll go through it and I'll show you what I mean. It just seems to be just sat there. All right, let's go through it. So there is a startup. So the carb air filter needs to be pushed all the way forward. That's so that when you're going over grass or gravel, so that's cold air and just doesn't let dirt in. The prop control is pushed up to 100. I'm actually just going to check something. I'm going to just make sure that I've got this set to my speakers so you don't actually hear all the background noise. Okay, here we go. All right, this is good. So we've now got, let me go back. So we've got a carb air filter, throttle needs to be set to around about 50, but I'm going to push it to about maybe just, can you, if you can see this, 30%. Uh, the mixture control needs to be cut. The magnetos need to be switched on, both of these on. And the fuel, which I showed you was weirdly stopped by the yoke. I'm going to push that to on. This needs to go on. And at this point now, you've got to pump the wobble pump and this pumps the uh, pressure and allows the actual aircraft to get some oil pressure. Now there's a good chance that this will not work because I can't really tell if you pushed it enough. And then you're supposed to do something with the engine primer, but at the moment. So then you're gonna flick on what's basically the boost coil and the starter and you push these both together. And what you're listening, that's what you're listening for. That beautiful sound of the Merlin engines. All right, I've got the air brakes on now. I'm going to just throttle back, ease it back a little bit. So I'm going to talk to you about what we're going to do. So, yeah, it's a beautiful model, but there's a few things that definitely need fixing with it. Okay, mate, thank you. So let's have a little look-see. So let's move around the cockpit and back. We'll go back inside again. Now, do you want to keep the engine ticking over? And what I'm going to do is show you the map. So if I push the VFR map you can see where we are now so if I zoom out on the map we're gonna head across but we're actually not gonna follow this red line I'm actually gonna follow the coastline around and I'm gonna talk first of all I'm gonna go down to San Meriglis and we'll talk about that and then we're gonna cut across the beaches and end up looking at Pegasus Bridge and then back to the LFRK should be good should be interesting so let's go please if you're watching say hello in the comments say hi just give us a like and a follow much appreciated all right, so let's shut the VFR map. So we, the, with the real Spitfire, the, the nose is very, very high. So on the day when they were flying, the pilots would zigzag like an S shape while they were taxiing, just so you didn't run into anything. So I'm gonna try and uh, simulate that. First things first, let's, uh, let's close the door. So from the outside, you'll be able to see, got that nice and shut, so I'm not gonna fall out. It's about eight o'clock in the morning here, so I'm gonna go back now and bring the canopy across. This is gonna make it nice and quiet, so hopefully you can hear that. I'm just gonna check that everything is happening so you can hear me. In the chats, please let me know uh, whether you can hear me and give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate any feedback. Like I said, I'm doing everything on a wing of the prayer, so if the sound isn't right, someone needs to let me know. Okay, so let's have another look at the map again. So we are, I don't know if you can see this, on the left hand side, we are just at Buffalo and we're gonna come south, all right? So that's where we're heading. I'll switch that overlay off. I've got another one later on. Okay, so let's taxi out. I'm not gonna bother with air traffic control because it's just painful. I'm going to shift that down. So what I'm gonna do is release the parking brakes, go full left rudder, and try and spin this on a sixpence as we come back out. We don't want to hit the building. All right, this thing is so touchy. The pilots used to say she was a, a goddess in the air and a bitch on the ground, and I can see what they mean because this model not so bad, but it does have a tendency to just flip us over. Look at these idiots on the runway. Don't mind me. All right. You can actually sit up in the seat, but can, you can see how... Um, how dodgy that is. I'm going to move right forward if I can. Hang on a sec. There you go. I'm just going to see over the nose. Nope. Even now I can't. 
so I'm going to just slow down for a second. I, I, look, these wouldn't be here in real life, so I'm just going to pretend that I'm zigzagging around them. Oh my god, I knew that was going to happen. Ugh, so annoying. Just the slightest touch. Let's go again. Ignore all that. <laughs> so frustrating. Uh, okay. Start again. So I'm just going to flick everything up. <laughs> it doesn't want to go. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a few problems with this. Let's get the wobble pump going. Try that again. Come on, man. Nope. I didn't want to start now. I've started doing it again. Let's just go from scratch then. So, now it's winding down. This, what will I say? That's up full. That's cut. These two are on. This needs to be set to on. That's on. The wobble pump. Pump up the pressure. Bloody hell, what a pain. And let's try it now. All right, we're in business. We're in business. All right, let's do it slowly then. So I'm going to go a little bit slower out of here so I don't crash it. It does tend to flick over. I'm just going to ignore anything on the runway because it wouldn't be there, obviously. So as we taxi out of here, basically Sherberg, near Sherberg, we're going to... I might just do it like this so I can actually see. Let's get out on the runway and at least get up into the air. Alright. Don't want to go too fast because you can actually flip it like you just saw if you were there earlier. I'm going to head straight out of here and um, we're just going to go east. And then I'm going to do a bank around the actual airport and then we're going to head south. So uh, you can feel it just racing. I'm just dabbing the brakes as well because it's just as likely to go arse over tit as anything else. Like it, it is a pig on the ground, I have to say. Alright, let's ease this out. It's a beautiful morning. Okay. So what you see is once it picks up speed, the nose will tip forward. So the takeoff speed for the Spitfire is about 110, which I'm at now. So I'm going to pull up, gears up, flaps back up. It is a beautiful <laughs> plane. I've got the canopy still open. That's okay, you can fly with the canopy open. So we're up and we're just going to head south to San Mera and I'm going to talk to you what happened there. All right, we're on our way. Check out the scenery. I've got the door wide open as well. What's a plum? Okay, so I'm going to go back in the cockpit. It is a bit noisy. I should have shut the door earlier on. Let's just shut that. And then we're going to lean back, shut the canopy. Okay. So we're on the Normandy coastline and we're away. We're going to head down to San Mariglis. The reason we're going to San Mariglis is because probably one of the first... Uh, engagements that the 82nd Airborne had, they were dropped here at San Mary Glease and they had a hell of a time trying to, once they did, they sort of landed and the Germans were waiting for them and it was just carnage to be honest with you. So the 82nd Airborne dropped here where we're going and then further south uh, the uh, 101st dropped at Carentan. So if you've ever seen the movie or the film Band of Brothers, uh, you can see what it was like there. The One of the Hey mate, how are you? Travis, I can hear you, yeah, thank you. How are you, my friend? There's a bit of a delay, so I have to apologise. But yeah, uh, should I follow a different platform? No, you can stay on YouTube if you want to, if it's working for you. Thank you for coming along. Can you actually hear me? <laughs> I should have checked all this, shouldn't I? Let me know if you can. Like I said, there is a bit of a delay on uh, me being able to speak to people. 
but no follow up on YouTube by all means that's awesome all right so we've got the clouds on I might change the clouds so you've got a decent view um, we're heading over so there's a road you should be able to see this road the main road that road all the way to San Meriglis and it's interesting that when you actually get to San Meriglis uh, there is no I don't think the the game actually allows for um, oh, that's cool mate thank you that you can hear me that's awesome I'll work out one of these days why there's a delay but uh, yeah thank you for joining me um, we're in Normandy and we're flying the new Spitfire model and we're just gonna head down we're on our way down to San Meriglis all right she's beautiful look at this it's a beautiful countryside couple of tweaks I've made to the simulator so it's like it should look a bit more vibrant okay zoom back out to the cockpit so you can see I, I, I do feel like it's really low and you're right on the wings I don't know if that's there's definitely a few things that need to be fixed with it okay so all right I'm gonna come down a little bit and I'm gonna put the flaps on so that from the outside you'll be able to get a nice view so as we approach San Meriglis which is you can just see it over there as we're just coming to it now yeah this is where the 82nd Airborne US Division dropped I can change the plane, yep, yeah, but for today we're just in the Spitfire, but yeah, you can definitely change the plane. So Sam Eriglis is here, and the when they drop, the paratroopers, the US paratroopers at 8 seconds, just dropped all over the place. And it took them a hell of a time to get back to all form up. Uh, but yeah, they landed here, and there's one guy, he's a very famous guy, he landed on the actual steeple of the church itself, and he was hung up on his parachute, and he spent two hours just watching the carnage down below and um, is if you go to San, uh, San Eriglis today his actual statue is up there what's he saying sorry the reason I said it's not a different mind I was yeah look if you're thinking about getting it get it I, I think it's amazing I really do I mean look at it it's just stunning it really is okay so Let's have a look see if we can find the church I don't think it's actually here they don't haven't actually put it in there but yeah this is St Meriglis so the paratroopers would have been dropped all over here and they would have tried to make their way fighting into the center of the, of the town Pretty cool. All right, so what we're going to do is head further south. So that was San Meriglis, and um, very important part of the battle, early stages. We're going to head down to Carantan. So what they were trying to do, the Allies, was with the US on this side and the western side was sort of bracket the beachheads. So if you could hold this, and they were trying to take um, Cannes and Cherbourg, but obviously in the end. They, it was a hell of a game so they had to sort of like hold on to it for a lot longer and they sort of just bypassed it in the end all right let's head to Carantan and then we're going to head out across to the beaches so I'll show you as I'm as we're going here I'll put the little um, display up now I'm sort of managing the simulator and also let's go with the okay so you can see here all right so we're basically at on the way down to Carantan now so the beaches that you can see to your left would have been the Utah beaches so the first one was Utah then you have Omaha Gold Juno and Sword so all along the part of the, this area was all separated up into these beaches so you can see why it was important to take San, Mar San Meriglis and Carantan because it would have bracketed on the western front on the western side okay I'm gonna move this because I can't actually see anything Yeah, thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm sort of, if I'm sounding very vague, it's because I'm sort of trying to juggle about 16 different things, and um, one of them was the chat. 
All right, so let's. Do you know what I might do? I might just. Maybe we might just have a look. Okay, we'll circle back around because I've sort of. Let's sort of. Let's have a look. Yeah, if you're finding it interesting, my friend, literally, please do um, share, like, and follow. It's much appreciated. Um, just starting out, really, just trying to make it a little bit more different. Uh, if you go onto my Facebook chat, if you go into Facebook, there's a map. If you click on that map, you can actually follow along with me. Oh, I got 59 followers. That's not bad. 17 days to go until I get to 100. All right, so we're on our way to Carantan, where the 101st Airborne dropped. And again, like I said before, if you watch Band of Brothers, you'll be able to see. Uh, it should be, uh, go into the Facebook page, it should be under the, thank you Travis, go into the Facebook page, this one, Bernie, how you going my friend, true, we were outnumbered, we'd sort of got a little bit of a handle on it um, at this point, so I think on, on D-Day itself, D itself, we launched the Allies, I think it's over a thousand and something um, sorties, whereas the Germans only managed 300 but they'd obviously had a bit of a kick in so they were just sort of recuperating and it was really interesting because the allies uh, even after the d-day landings took place it was almost weeks before the germans thought that this was actually the real invasion because they were waiting about the part of calais and they thought that's where the invasion would come and the, the deception was so amazing that it took weeks for them to actually realize it and on d-day itself rommel who is the uh, german commander he was at home in Germany um, for his wife's birthday, so he wasn't even around at the time. So he was the, the doing the Atlantic War. Okay, let's have a look. This is Karen Tan, a lot bigger. So yep. So this is would have been where the hundred and first would have dropped. I would imagine. Looking around and looking at it, you can see some of the um, areas where it would have been a good good place and why you can see why this was a good place there's a lot of open space here for them to land there and then make their way into the town itself uh, I don't know if he was in trouble uh, you're talking about um, Rommel he basically he didn't want to go and, and he, he bought ironically there's a funny story that he bought shoes this beautiful pair of shoes for his wife and he wanted to give them to his wife uh, whose birthday, like I said, it was, and um, they didn't fit. So, yeah, interesting. And actually, when they said to Hitler, uh, when it all was starting to happen and the beachhead had been sort of fixed up, um, they said, should we ring Hitler and tell him? And they were like, well, no, he's in bed. Um, yeah, I've got quite a few family members that have served, um, First World War and Second World War, none of them in the Air Force, all in the Army. So uh, my grandfather was in Burma uh, and in hot and in um, uh, in Belgium near the end of the war. And my grandfather, my other grandfather, was in the lights. He did the searchlights in London, but no one uh, in the air force. All right. So we're going to head across now to the beaches. I don't know if you guys have got the map and you can see where we're going. If you're on Google Maps, uh, if you want to check, we're heading towards... So we're just leaving Juno Beach, which is where we head over now. We're going to take the flaps up and just get move on. So to the right, to the left here, you can see Juno Beach. Uh, sorry, uh, Utah Beach. And the next beach we actually come to is Omaha. And we'll talk about that when we get a little bit closer. So I'll show you the map as we're heading north. Uh, let me see if I can get some juggling. Um, let's get the map back up. Okay, yeah. So actually before we get to Omaha, we're gonna get to Pointe de Hoc, which I'll talk about in a second. And then Omaha Beach, which was the, the one where the Americans took the most casualties, two and a half thousand, I think it was. So let's have a look at Point de Hoc. And Point de Hoc was really, really important because the Rangers uh, took Point de Hoc and they had a hell of a job trying to get up the, what is basically a sheer cliff, you'll see in a minute. So they had a sheer cliff and they had to sort of rappel up the cliff. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just looking from the hop. Okay, I'm going to make that my next. All right, bear with me. I'm hoping this is entertaining as well as being flying. Yeah, let, listen, the Merlin engine sounds amazing, doesn't it, Bernie? It's such a cool piece of kit, I have to say. Uh, if you're here, if you if you've just joined and you step back later on and you watch the beginning, and I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll land it and I'll restart it for you, so you can um, you can hear it kicking off. It sounds amazing. All right, so we are on our way. That basically on my right hand, on my right wing. Thank you for the like. I can't. I have to apologise because the likes happen and there's a 15 second delay, so I can't actually see who's liking. But as soon as I see it, I'm gonna say thank you. Pull the string, <laughs> Bernie. Thank you so much. Listen, likes and follows uh, and shares really, really helping me out. Uh, I got a hundred to go because I need, I need 41. Pull string. What string? <laughs> All right. Where's this? Okay. So we're coming. I'm gonna come down for you. Okay. So. You'll see Point de Hoc coming up in a second, and it's a series of cliffs, and you can just see them here. So let's come across, so you get a nice view. I'm gonna put the flaps down and slow down a little bit. You can hear that clanking sound, that's the flaps coming down. Okay, so here, this is Point de Hoc, and this is where the US Rangers would have climbed up here uh, using their repel kits and sadly it's crap because it looks really awful but yeah and then you can see if I fly, I'm going to fly back over here you can see the scars on the landscape you can actually still see so what I'll do is I'll come back through and all of that there I don't know if you can see that on my right wing I'll look through so you can see it uh, there as I'm flying across that's all uh, shell holes and there's some gun emplacements there as well and there's the big gun emplacement there as you can see, that there would have been a massive gun there. And what these guns did was that they threatened the ships out to sea. So they had to go. Uh, and that's why Point de Hoc was so important. And that's why they had to literally just climb up those hills to get to it. It's pretty amazing, that. Look at that. Now, I flew over here like I did a recce earlier on to see what was happening. And um, I hadn't seen that before. It's starting to load up. Yeah, so there's Point de Hoc. Imagine rappelling up there. Jesus Christ, that was crazy. All right, so that was, uh, where have we been to? We've been to San Mariglis, Carantan, and now we're moving across the beaches. And the, f the first beach we come to, so now we're moving away from U Utah Beach into basically Omaha. And interestingly though, when we're flying here, y uh, U uh, Omaha Beach, is, this tide is in. So I'm gonna fly out to the point where the landing craft would have come up, just to show you how far away from the beach it actually was. There's a hell of a distance. So right now in the, in the simulator, it doesn't actually do tides or anything. But um, yeah, you, you'll see, I'll, I'll fly out to how far away the actual landing craft would have come in. And what was really interesting about Omaha was that in the on the morning about six o'clock in the morning, or just before the um, troops landed, they sent uh, a lot of bombers over. And as the ships were coming in, they didn't want to hit the ships, and so they dropped their bombs from really high. Uh, and literally all the bombs landed above and beyond the actual beaches and left Omaha Beach almost intact completely. So that they flew straight across the coast. Whereas at Utah Beach, the, the bombers flew parallel to the beach. And the success was way more because they actually managed to take out a lot of the German um, defenses. Okay, this is Villeville Samer. Uh, well, I think we're coming into the Omaha beaches now. Uh, you'll see in a second. So have a little look on your map. Can I do a flat spin? Yeah, it will stall. So it does. Um, it does stall out if you. You'd need to do some. You need to do some pretty tricky maneuvers to for that to happen. So let me cool some there. I think is uh, is basically. I think is where we'll have a look. It's coming up here now, and this is Omaha. Just around the corner here. So I'll fly down and out so you can see how far and how much ground. And it was low tide too, so they came in at low tide. 
and the only thing for some of them was literally just the German emplacements, the, the tank traps. If you ever watch, you want to see a rendition of it, uh, have a look at um, Saving Private Ryan. So here you go, you can see the beaches here. And that's, uh, as we come up, this is, this is Omaha Beach here. That stretch there. So they would have needed to come in from where we are now. And the Germans, if you look back where the land is, where the um, houses are, to where this, these houses are now, they had machine gun emplacements at, at fire right across the beaches. It was just a, the, the perfect killing ground. So it was hardly surprising when the first wave came in, they lost so many. And then on top of that, by then the, the beach was just completely red, so that's why it's got the name Bloody Omaha. A terrible casualties. The first wave suffered like ridiculous and so on and so on. I might fly back actually because um, it's worth looking at again. Just so I can show you from what it would look like from the aircraft. So if you imagine like you've got to come in to that beach off a landing craft and you can just see like from the left to the right how you would just, if you had a machine gun on either side, plus only that they have mortars, artillery, and this is why they needed to take the guns at Point de Hoc, because they were just trained out onto this ocean and they were, could hit the ships and they had complete fire range and they had everything, every sector on the beach was pinpointed and so they could actually zone in those big guns on the beach here to just to meters. So the whole thing relied upon them getting to Point de Hoc and actually being able to shut it down and they did eventually but not before they just lost like I think at the end of it, it was like two and a half thousand men yeah it was pretty crazy okay let's go flaps up now and we're gonna get some speed I might do some uh, try and do some spins for you um, but it just seemed a bit disrespectful uh, on this flight but listen if you're enjoying it and um, you want to come and see more I've got a whole new bunch of a whole bunch of other flights as well that you can see we've gone all around the world this is the first time, the first flight with the Spitfire. But yeah, if, you, if you're liking it, then please give us a like and a follow. Um, do about two or three a week. There's a, there's a, what do you call it? There's a couple of memorials up here. So let's see if we can, I will try and slow down a little bit. Thank you for the likes, everybody. And much appreciated. We're in Normandy, and we're just taking the Spitfire. So if you hadn't, you didn't hear me earlier on, this Spitfire in particular would have flown uh, at D-Day, and you can tell that because of the actual markings on the plane. So the black and white stripes, they were painted the morning before, so that you, uh, our guns would be able to recognize, and all Allied planes, the gliders, everything, had, um, had these black and white markings. So we're at uh, Port de Passant, who paint, and this is, um, this is always interesting, like why we didn't try and get this. It would have been maybe this wasn't here before, uh, while the bat was on because it would have been perfect. It's a golf course. I think that's Omaha Golf Course. That's Omaha Beach Golf Course. I think this might have been built afterwards, but yeah, that would have been pretty handy, wouldn't it, to have had that? Very cliffs. All right, so we are now. Let's go inland a little bit. So thank you for the likes and the follows, much appreciated. Not sure still who's with me, a few people, three. I'll take it. Uh, so thank you for sticking with me. All right, we're going inland. So I'm gonna pull the map up again in a second and I'll show you where we're heading. No, it wouldn't have been the same plane over Hawaii. Um, I think that's P45s or, or um, no, sorry. Um, I'll have a think about that. But no, it wouldn't have been this one. So let's just check something out. So I'm going to have a look at the secondary overlay. And I've done that one. Oh, no, that is the right one. Okay, so we're now heading into Gold Beach. Thank you, Ron. Uh, much appreciated, my friend. So we're in the Spitfire over Normandy. And if you look at the map, we're heading over what is what would have been Gold Beach. And that would have been, then you've got 30 core. British Second Army, and this from this point on, the Americans had Utah and Omaha. We've now got Gold, Sword, and Juno. This is a Spitfire Mark IX. And do you know what? It's just stalled. Oh my god. 
it's just stalled. I've got no power. <laughs> just a random. Okay, all I'm flying now is a massive glider. Now, why did that just happen? All right, I'm going to try and I'm going to have to crash land this. Unless I could start it again. Holy shit, I've got to make a choice now whether to land this or just try and salvage it. Nope, I'm going to have to crash land this. Just bear with me, everybody. So this is not what I was expecting. Shit. Okay, let's find somewhere to land. You've seen that film. That's, oh, my God. You've seen Dunkirk, right? Well, this is the... Okay, I'm going to go in that field, so I've just got to... Ch All right, hang on. Two things. I need to... I wasn't expecting that to happen, so... Okay, I've got nothing. I'm just flying a massive glider. Oh, my God. Okay, how am I going to bring this down? Yeah, hang on, everybody. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I literally have no idea where that stored. I was trying to, <laughs> it just stored in midair, and then I was trying to um, salvage the actual stream. Let's go back to the menu. All right, sorry about that. I've got no idea why that just stored. <laughs> Don't feel bad, you didn't do it. Just a weird, um, yeah, I should have tried to uh, deal with that earlier. Let's go to Pop Carpy K. Um, so. I'm going to set that as my departure. This is a different airport. And I'm just going to start from the actual... <laughs> yeah, ouch. I walked away from it. It was just a scratch. The Spitfire's shot, but I'm okay. Thanks for asking, everybody. I'm, I'm walking back to the mess as we speak. All right, let's go again. So I will show you on a map where we're going this time. Yeah, that was a bit of a burn, wasn't it? Okay, so this time we're going to restart and I'm actually going to start at the other in Khan all right so Khan uh, airport and on this side of the map on the western side of the map this is where the British airborne forces would have landed and they had a much better time of it if you what is going on something's up with this simulator but I'm not quite sure what's happening here it's all gone a bit pear-shaped who's still with me anybody still with me Okay, let's hope that this actually works. Let me just see what I'm doing because it's so early in the morning. I'm going to just change the weather. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to make it 8 o'clock, quarter past 8. Enough time for everybody to have had their breakfast. All right, now, are you ready? You can hear the engines. So we're in Khan. On the map, let me show you on the map where we are. Actually, I've got a pretty cool map here. This is a, an add-on. So if I make this bigger for you, so the town of Khan is to the east. Okay, we're here at Kapi K Airport, and we're going to head up this, in, this little inlet of water to Bonville, Bonville. And it's this, I don't know if you can see my actual cursor moving, I don't think you can. So we're gonna be head up to Bonville, and this is where Pegasus Bridge is. So this is what would have happened if gin and tonic. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna die with my gin and tonic. All right, thank you for the like, whoever that was. Really much appreciated. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna head up to Bernaville, and this is. Uh, so if you look at the map, if I actually change this, so I'm gonna shut this map down. We'll go back to the the main map where I'm showing you the actual on the stream uh, here. So I don't know if you can see to the far right hand side where Sword Beach is. Just below East Room, there you can see Can. So that's where we are at the moment, Can. And can you see, I don't know if you can see that tiny little Pegasus. That's where the British Airborne, that's where we're going, and that's where the British Airborne Forces would have landed. Um, John Howard's um, regiment, I think it was what it was. But I'll show you, it's pretty interesting because you can see where the landers land, land, landed. Okay, let's go. We'll, we'll set this thing up. All right, here we go. Very good chance that this thing's going to flip over, so I'm going to take the brakes off. Like I said before, if you look down the nose, you can't actually see very much until the aircraft picks up enough speed. 
The takeoff speed for this thing, that is so right, left, right, 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 it's all over the place. The takeoff speed is about 110, and then it just lifts itself into the air. I'm going to do it very gently. And she's up. Gear up. Alright, so I need to do a 180. She nearly span out then. Alrighty, we're on our way. It's an awesome plane, Travis. Look at that. Look at the sunset. Seriously. Muscat for his wife, Kay. Okay. So we'll head over Can. Can. I keep wanting to call it Cairns, it's not. So there you can see Cairns there. Can. Khan. Let me just say it properly. The three stripes just got you into the cool zone. <laughs> I was yeah, I was trying to not get shot down, and I managed to stop. I don't know why that stalled. It's a very strange. Thank you for all the likes. I'm not quite sure. I can't actually see who's given them to me, but thank you, much appreciated. All right, so it was a long time before the Allies took Khan. Uh, the resist. You can see why. Look at it, it's huge, and they fought uh, all over this uh, the city here. It was a pretty crazy time, and the Germans just weren't going to give it up. But they sort of bypassed it in the end. But it's here. If I come back down, I'll show you here. So we're gonna, we're gonna go inside the cockpit and try not to stall it. I don't know why that happened. I'm gonna have to work out. Maybe it's something. Anyway, let's have a little look. Okay, so if you see this bridge right there's, after this sort of housing estate here, just below me. Okay, so looking down. Now this is an actual mod, right? There's an, uh, this is not normally like this. It's normally just a bit of a stick, but you will see as we go further up, some bridges. And it was imperative they caught these bridges because catching these bridges allowed Howard's uh, team to be able to open a gateway into Khan, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So it was imperative they actually got this. You got sold water down. Yeah, what can I say? All right, so we're heading up now to. Um, let me just see how far we're. We're not far off actually. Buenaville, it's up here. So let's slow down for you, and you will see Pegasus Bridge. Now there's actually a, a refinery nearby, which I'm looking for. There it is, out on my right wing. In the distance, you can see a refinery. So where I'm flying now, and I'm going to come in really low for the first uh, first. Um, Pass is where the where Howard's gliders landed. So 30, 40, there was quite a lot of them. They landed in this patch. You can see Pegasus Bridge coming up in the horizon. Let's have a look. So I'm not sure how well it's modelled, but there you can see Pegasus Bridge. Uh, and this is where Howard's uh, British Airborne Forces landed. And they would have landed right underneath where I'm actually, where I am here. Look, see this? This is where they would have landed, where that roundabout is, and right below me. And there's the bridge. So they would have literally landed their gliders. They landed within 20 meters of that actual bridge, right where I am now, right underneath me. And they just literally ran across the bridge, and the Germans were caught napping. And they, this is about, I think it's about 5 in the morning, uh, 5.40 in the morning. And that's, if I show you behind me that, you can see where the gliders would have landed. And I'm going to fly back over the bridge. And it's called Pegasus Bridge because I think of the emblem of the paratroopers. Let's get some rudder and we'll head back around again. Thank you, my friend. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I will. After this one, you can definitely give me some suggestions. I'm going to fly quite low and I'm going to fly over the bridge so you can see it and then I'm going to come back again because I think this is such a cool little bridge there you go you can just imagine them all running hell for leather so the left hand side of the bridge where they came from it's German headquarters I would imagine here yeah the parrot emblem thank you Bernie 
uh, was actually a Pegasus. There's, um, I'm not quite sure if that would have been there, this little refinery, but that would have been a really nice um, landmark to actually sort of have. Yeah, and so all of the gliders, the horse gliders, they would have been towed from bases around the UK and the paratroopers would have got in at all the, pl all the little airports, uh, air bases around the UK and they would have been towed out over the sea and then as they were close to they would have been let go I'm sorry, I hope the simulator's not just crashing that could be a streaming thing alright, let's go and have another look at the bridge oh, where'd it go? Oh, it's on the other side of the river. There's two rivers. If you look, they intersect each other at the top. I was flying along the wrong river. Uh, no, you can't fly the ATM Warthog in this one. You'd need something like DCS uh, simulator. Uh, this is really early days for this simulator, but this is there's only a few planes that you can actually get. Um, but this just happens to be one that was released on Friday. But yeah, you'd need DCS to have the Warthog. All right, let's go one more time. So yeah, so drop the gliders here. And on the right hand side that's where they would have taken that town and they were told to hold it and it was at this point that once they got the bridge and Howard had got his men across to that sort of section over there that the high command were like should we tell Hitler should we tell Hitler and because he'd gone to bed they didn't wake him up and he had the ability because uh, what had happened was during the war obviously because he was such a megalomaniac he basically took absolute control of um, the Wehrmacht and the SS and everything so no decisions could be made with ha without his say so so the panzer tanks or the tiger tanks and um, the SS divisions which would have just pushed the English and the Americans back into the ocean couldn't get released because they wouldn't wake him up to tell him that it was happening and so by the time they actually realised it was real it was too late like Rommel was on holiday with his wife uh, the uh, the uh, the Panzer divisions that was that could have just made a massive difference weren't released, but the real problem that you've got here is like during the actual battle it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks after they'd established a bridgehead that was just the beginning, the real fight was through what's called the Bacage the, the Normandy countryside where it just bogged down and um, you know they the Germans hid in the hedges and just it was just an absolute nightmare, but we're here today and eventually it will happen so this little flight is a little homage to those guys and to everybody else that was there alright let's find an airport uh, now where is the airport I think it's back the way we came so we're going to go back to um, Khan and we'll find the airport down here alright Tigers versus Panzers well, Panzers, um, what is interesting as well is that the, the Allied forces, during, especially for Omaha, they developed a tank that could um, ride on water. Yeah, you better get gas. Well, how much fuel have I got? Maybe it is fuel. Well, that's oxygen supply. Anyway, next time I'm just going to land it. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Let's see if we can get this thing down without stacking it. I need to just turn off. I've got so many... Alright, keep your eyes open for a runway. Yeah, so I was saying, so the, the Americans developed, and the, the British, sorry, the British developed a tank, uh, Sherman tanks, which were the staple um, tank at that time. They developed these tanks that would run on water. So they had this massive covering around the outside, and they dropped 20 of them, I think, uh, on the beaches of Omaha, way out, way too far out, and they got swamped. And to this day, there's actually a whole bunch of tanks. 20 of these d duplex drive tanks that are on the bottom of the ocean and they never reached, I think one or two reached the, reached the, reached the actual beach no sooner did they get to the beach that the Germans took them out with um, 88s and basically just smashed them so they never actually made it off the beaches and there's about 20 of them no, the U-boats would have been out there um, they would have been, they, they were harassing the, the convoys they had their day and at the time like the wolf packs, they'd hunt in wolf packs so the U-boats would uh, took huge tolls on shipping, supplies getting across from the US to here, to the UK, but and to wherever. But 
yeah, they had a hell of a time. But eventually, we worked out how to beat them, and then they just became obviously, and it was almost like a death sentence if you were in the U-boat flotilla, because we just worked out ways how to sink them. Alrighty, where is the airport? Keep your eyes peeled, boys and girls, and if you can see it, shout out. Because I'm sort of lost. Copy K. Uh, I think it's over here. Okay, and it'll be interesting to see if I've not actually landed this. Cause if you, oh, here I can see it. Okay, we're in business. Yeah, there it is. Just on the horizon. Out uh, on my right, on um, my starboard side. And we've still got fuel. I really don't understand why that stopped. Do you know what I think it was? I think you're, I think you're supposed to shut down the um, air intake, uh, which is that little uh, black lever there. Um, I'm not sure. All right, let's slow down, because this could go tits up as well. Let's go gears down. All right, so once we get here, we'll be able to end the stream. And if you've enjoyed it, a like and a follow really helps. Especially that follow button, because I need to get to 100 followers and I can start handing out badges. Much, much appreciated. Flat spin it. <laughs> all right, hang on. Let me land it first. I just want to do this properly, and then we'll start doing some stupid stuff, all right? Okay. I'm going to have to be inside the cockpit for this. I need to look over. Okay, here we go. So the landing speed for this is 100, 95 to 105. So you can look at my airspeed indicator, I'm going too fast. What the hell? All right, here we go. So this is gonna, this could go one of two ways. because so I've never landed this plane before. Wow, and it's gusty too. Come on, come on. So it wants to be up in the air. Okay, I'm going to flare this now. What? What happened there? Why was that? I'm not sure why that happened. I thought I'd done a really nice landing there. Weird. What was wrong with that? Anyway. All right. Okay. That was it. I'm going to try one more landing. Not having that. I don't understand why that didn't happen. That was really weird. I thought that was a pretty good landing. I do remember the game Pilot Wings. I used to love that game. <laughs> it was cool. All right. I'm not going to end the stream with that because that was ridiculous. I don't think that was fair. Let's. What about if we made it rain? Can you guys see the rain? Yeah, I did have the wheels down. Oh my God, what is happening? Oh my God, okay, one more go, because that's really, that was really touchy. I thought I was flaring that, no problem. Okay, I realize what I've just done there. You can't even have the throttle on, even remotely, it'll just mess up. Okay, let's make it raining, just to make it a little bit harder. Let's make it nine in the morning. Nice day for it, look at this. Typical European weather. It's a squirrel. To be honest with you, mate, it might have been actually. Alright, let's go. I'm going to do one more landing in the rain just so I can prove to myself that I can do it. That really did seem to. I didn't, didn't think I hit that too hard. You've got to give this some rudder because it just wants to spin off the runway. Alright, let's give this a go. Okay, I'm going to do a circuit and I'm going to come back. And just to prove it, I'm going to show you, Travis, that the wheels are down. Alright, so I'm going to do a complete circuit of this um, airfield. And then I'll show you the wheels down. <laughs> Sounds like a weed whacker. If you had a weed whacker this powerful, mate, you wouldn't have a lawn. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna come parallel and I'm gonna turn around. That's a beautiful view, isn't it? 
I'm going to go a bit further out. All right. Chavis, I need you to be my ears and my e my eyes and my ears for this one. It was a pretty bit stupid putting the rain on. Chavis, see the wheels? Have another look. Okay. Oh, why did I put the rain on? Look at the state of this. Where the hell's the runway? What the? Oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> Nah, that's crazy. All right, let's change the rain. I can't see. I'm trying to hold it. Um... Oh, it wasn't too far off. Okay. Whoa. All right, let's do this properly. Uh, it's starting to play up because the trim isn't working. All right, let's go. <laughs> it did feel a bit that way, didn't it? All right, this is it. Put your bets on as to whether this is actually going to happen or not. That is a tetchy little beast. And because I had the rain on, I can't actually see where I'm going. All right. Oh, my God, this thing's all over the place. Wheels down. Yeah. Come on, baby. Let's have you. Come on, come on, come on. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. <sighs> Did you see that? Butter, 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 butter. Oh, okay. I hate this plane. <laughs> Get it down and then I flipped it. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for joining the stream. <laughs> much appreciated. Um, I'm going to call it a day there. So I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, I do lots and lots of other stuff as well. So please hit that follow button, um, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel. You can see all the along the top. It's on Twitter, Facebook, Discord. Yeah, check out some of the other stuff later, my friend. And please, yeah, give us a like and a follow. It's the follows I'm le I need at the moment. So if you can give us a follow, that is much appreciated. Okay, guys, take care, and I will see you.